for a big speaker like this, it's easy to find which is positive and negative. You just uh, give it, I don't know, maybe 3 volts or something like that, uh, or maybe even with a single battery, 1.5 volts if it's a smaller speaker, uh, and you will see the membrane either moving forward or pulling backwards. If it's moving forward, you have the correct polarity and you know where is plus, considering that you have plus marked on the battery itself. But with this, I cannot really give it enough power to move the membrane. It's a tweeter. It doesn't really like to move its membrane. So, hmm, it will be tricky to figure out what is plus and what is minus. Just another thing, if you have a cable like this and you want it wrapped, attach it to a drill, hold it with your hand and uh, uh, hold it tight and start rotating it. And this is what you get. If you want to make sure it doesn't come undone, you can heat it up with a little bit with a strong hair dryer or just lightly with a heat gun, but just lightly do not melt it at all. But I think for me it's enough. If I stretch it a little bit, I think it will be enough for my needs. Okay, there's a bit of weirdness considering the polarity of the tweeter in uh, two-way speakers. Uh, some actually prefer to reverse the polarity. Uh, some say it, uh, for home audio it doesn't matter that much and you will only hear a slight difference in some really particular scenarios. <sighs> Others like them 100% in phase, so yeah, I'm not really sure. I think I will build both speakers. One of them I will reverse the polarity and have a listen and see what I like more in the type of music that I uh, listen to and what sounds best for me. Because again, this I, this is nothing calculated. Old boxes designed for different type of speakers. I'm just throwing speakers in and see if it's uh, usable and I like it or not, and that's about it. So yeah, but now I'm also checking the polarity of the woofers. This has a plus in here, so I'm quite sure it uh, has a plus here. Uh, I will give it three volts. It's not connected now. Let me show you how that woofer moves. You can see it pushing outwards. And now I should do the same with the other little um, speaker in here to make sure they are in phase. In theory, I think they marked here the negative, but who knows, maybe Russians run out of red paint and they actually marked the positive, but with black paint. So I need to test for this. If they are not in phase, they would cancel each other out uh, quite badly. So that's not what we want. Twitter in theory, if it's not in phase, it only cancels in the um, separation area of the filter. So, yeah, there shouldn't be issues. Okay, let's test this one. Touching the negative, see what it does. Oh, it comes upwards. So they marked with black the positive. Exactly different from the other speaker. Luckily, I don't trust the uh, Russian things, so uh, I was right. Probably they run out of red paint. Great. Did a little bit of more research and the consensus is that the capacitor, the non-polarized capacitor, is most times put on the positive input of the tweeter. Doesn't really matter if it's on the negative or positive, but the general consensus is that most people put it on the positive. So if the guys uh, that built this thing for uh, Audi also used that consensus. In theory, this is the positive, but uh, we never know. Again, I will try with the other one reversed and see if I hear any difference, just to be sure. But everything else is done. I put again a bit of glue uh, in the area of uh, the connectors where I soldered the wires just because they were moving a little bit around and I don't want them to be able to move just from all the age and beam being bumped around probably. Second speaker also finished. Twitter soldered in reverse polarity and again I will listen to see what I prefer. 
but now let's put some uh, fill in them and then connect wires and uh, have our first listen so filled up one of the speakers i left about this much of the original fill out i decided it was a bit too much maybe the original speakers were just smaller so they did, did not need to compress the fill in like that but for what i've seen in other speakers it was a bit too much for me uh, soldered the wires made sure that red is positive and it's kept positive uh, all the way in and out of the filter apart from the tweeter in this particular one now i'm going to close it up not uh, finally because i didn't put the front plates on them and they attach with screws so i will need to take this out at the moment but i want to see the speakers running make sure everything is fine and only then finish them up so uh, yeah close this one up temporarily do the same on the other and the speakers are ready to be played they are connected in series i want them to get exactly the same signal and my amp could not handle two toms so couldn't be connected in parallel so series it is to have eight ohms and i have no clue which is which it wasn't even intentional uh, i i lifted them up and i i don't remember <laughs> so uh, it's uh, for the best actually and uh, this is why i wanted them without the covers because i want to be able to block uh, the tweeters one by one and see which sounds better and then obviously i will also do a test where only a single speaker is connected in turn and see if uh, i have a confirmation from my ears okay so i'm listening to them for about half an hour at least ah really hard to put in words what i feel this one seems to be more alive to me it's more equilibrated more i don't know this one has an area where i almost feel it muffled or I don't know. I would I prefer this type of sound. And yeah, I I did I I have a tool, a audio tool is called the little software name. You can search it um, on Google Play, install it uh, if you want. I play with it uh, when I test speakers, drivers mostly not full speakers, but I tried to see at least an idea of the frequency response of both of these. So first will be this and second will be this. We are recording the screen on my phone because it's an app on my phone, obviously. So this is the left speaker that I'm not that happy about. And let's see the right speaker, ah, the other direction. Okay. So the left speaker has a deep somewhere a bit below 4k at least from what this app is showing me how accurate this is i do not know exactly but the graph itself should be fairly accurate uh, the frequency exactly i'm not sure 100 percent okay so it has a bit of a dip there reasonably flat rest of it the one that i like way smaller dip and it has a peak right about here Hmm. <laughs> okay. So presumably this deep is what I don't like. And they are getting exactly the same signal, both of them. They are in series, so no change there. Many of you might tell me, hey, you're wrong. This is the bad thing. This peak right here, not that deep. But I kind of feel more this that I don't like. So the left one doesn't seem to be uh, on my plate, at least. Now uh, let's uh, open it up and see what we choose. It's opened up and we still don't know. I swear to God, I don't know which one of these is. Hey, did I leave the cable long enough to be able to lay this flat? 
I did. Ha! <laughs> Happy accident. It's the reversed one. Yay! So basically, somewhere around the crossover area, uh, being out of phase, uh, the bass and mid, uh, bass mid combined big speakers basically, are cancelling out with the Twitter a bit of uh, the frequency response. That's my understanding at least. But honestly, if I would have two of these speakers connected like this and two of the other ones, it would be quite hard to, to choose if I wouldn't be able to listen them at the same time. So the difference is small, but you could clearly see the dip on that graph. So, yep, reversing the wires. And it seems that they did put the capacitor on the positive on that uh, tweeter in the car. And we are ready. Reversed the wires, made sure everything is black in here. And uh, even on the tweeters where I put the glue. And uh, next I'm just going to put a tiny bit... <sighs> A little white spot, um, a tiny bit of uh, sealing tape in these holes where the cover will be. So that's also sealed and uh, hopefully we don't need to ever open these ones again. That would be the ideal situation. Let them play music. Ready to put this in, put these uh, protections. I have these kind of pads, cut them to pieces and put them in here and made some slits. So in theory, everything should be going in quite easily. Also put some foam in here. It had originally some foam in four places, but I don't think it was enough. If you look here, you can see a mark where plastic was uh, rubbing also here, basically in the corners next to the base speaker. So I put some there and for good measure I put a bit more. In theory plastic should not touch this wood anywhere in this uh, speaker now. But let's see if we can still put that in. Went in just fine. Let's see if I can tighten the screws now properly and then do the same on this. Didn't plan all the way through. That screw right there is a pain to tighten. I could remove the filter but I don't want to. Luckily I have some bendy tools that should do the trick. All screws are tightened, put back the filling, close the lid and we are done with this one. We have that one to do. Polarity check, filling check, another polarity check, cover goes down, make sure, oh no, 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 not finished. Forgot to put sealing all around this edge. I will not be removing the protection on top of this foam because if I remove it, this gets to be double sided tape. And that would be a hell of a fun if I ever need to open up this speaker after, I don't know, 5 or 10 or 20 years. So protection stays in place to keep the glue away from this. So it's just single sided uh, sticky now. And it's finally getting close closed actually but i need to make sure that i don't uh, catch any of the filling on the side so cannot fully fill it these speakers are fighting back did too many modifications to them maybe they don't like it so uh, these things are not tightening anymore i could uh, turn them around until tomorrow nothing would happen so this is going in all the holes and i need to make sure it uh, goes in at the correct level deep in there so i tighten in this not in this ain't that cute but it's wrong just as a side note i found some info about this particular model lo26 it was built up until 1974 but obviously we only have the boxes from them and uh, let's see, I wanted to see the speakers. These are the original speakers in here, but I don't know the brand of the speakers themselves. Mm, I 
I will try to, to find the brand that was used by Löwe just from curiosity point of view, nothing else. Maybe I can see it here, Telefunken. I, I, I have the impression that I've seen this color on Telefunken uh, speaker drivers. Anyway, so here are more info about them. And I found another page. I will link both in the description with more Löwe uh, speakers. And we are on this column. And these were the cutout points for the filter. It was a three way filter. 7.5 kilograms, volume in liters, and frequency range. Again, this will also be linked in the description and here a catalog page with some info about our particular boxes. Again, I bought them just, uh, but they came also in white uh, and even LO27 came uh, in gray or white as far as I could find online. But I bought them just for the looks, honestly, nothing else because otherwise uh, I was convinced from the start that whatever speakers I throw in them, they are not original ones, the box is not designed for them, so uh, the result can vary. And in here it gives us different years, up to 75, but anyway, these are boxes made about almost 50 years ago. Also, it seems uh, somebody made a video online about the original uh, LO27 which were close enough to LO26 to give us an idea about uh, how they sounded. So I will also link this particular uh, video in the description of mine. Second speaker also ready to be closed up. Polarity is correct for all drivers. Also for the cover. So let's get this one also closed. I, I, I almost forgot about the tape all around. That would have sucked. A weirdness that I just noticed, on the back of these speakers there seem to be two types of screws. So maybe one of them had one type and the other had the other type. I mixed them up uh, and they seem to be working just fine in any of the holes. But again I needed to fill up the holes because they were already too loose from being opened up maybe a few times during its lifetime. And we are done, both of them closed up and I just wanted to mention something quite intriguing about this. So as you can see this is deep in here. Means that the plastic starts here then we have at least this thickness of wood. So this part is lost and another thickness of wood right here. So basically the internal space in this speaker is about this. <laughs> yeah. They look uh, quite big, uh, but uh, internally they are not at all. Cleaned up the speakers a little bit, had a listen to them for a while. And I must say, I do like the way they sound. They are not uh, in any way boomy with too much bass. They are quite uh, equilibrated, quite flat, might I dare say. So yeah, but obviously I need to listen to them in the room they will be played uh, in because I found out that a room changes the way speakers uh, sound a lot. So in here, it's good. We'll see there. song. Let's try something different.
considering I literally uh, threw in them three random, absolutely random speakers with nothing to do uh, with the way the speakers were uh, designed initially, that's a good result for me. I, I, I will take it. And I think I forgot one of the songs to show you the name. This one. Okay, so I will play uh, them in the particular room that they will sit in from now on and I will get back to you how I like them. But up until now, they are awesome. And the speakers are in their final position. I made my impression. Now I'm going to quickly give you a quick listen and you try to make your impression and then we will compare. This was the first one, let's try something else. Next.
So, what do you think of them? Did you make an impression? For me, honestly, they sound much better than I expected. They literally surprised me. They, I just threw some speakers in them. Two of them old Russians, one uh, from an Audi A4 from 2010, the tweeters. And uh, wow, so it's just a, a lucky thing. It, nothing is calculated. It's uh, probably the data on audio filter is helping a lot with the sound, but it's much, much better than I expected. It has uh, bass, it has mids, it has highs. The sound is well rounded. It fits really well this uh, 15 square meter room. And the speakers themselves feel much more bigger, much more powerful than they actually are at the end of the day. And that uh, old uh, and beat up uh, Marantz uh, amp, it's an MP140 if I remember correctly. It's playing with them perfectly. They are a perfect match. So uh, yeah, win some, lose some. In this case, I won. And I'm really happy that I have two nice uh, and compact speakers that are working perfectly and a ton of different projects in here. Nothing works from this whole thing apart from the speakers at the end. So lots of audio projects will be coming to the channel. And uh, yeah, hope you like this video. In which case, please give it a like, obviously. And as always, see you in the next one. Hopefully, again, a really successful one like this. And bye.